do worship and adoration? What gifts do we lead at the cradle of Christ? I find this week filled with more questions than answers. Is it difficult to fathom that our hopes and fears are being met in the coming of Jesus Christ? Prayer. Lord, empower us to respond with abundant surprise in the presence of Jesus. May you take it in your hands and our hopes and fears we may give to you the gifts you deserve of the coming to us as our King. to page 249. We'll stand and sing, Oh, come on, you faithful.
cloth to keep him warm. And then she laid him gently in the clean straw in a manger. And Mary and Joseph looked down upon their son with joy. And they named him Jesus, just as the angel told them to. That same night, an angel appeared to some shepherds. Oh, me and shepherds. I don't know if they're shepherd today since Rowan did show up. <laughs> uh, so the angel appeared to some shepherds in the hills above Bethlehem as they were watching their sheep. Okay. Oh, I have to hear some better than that. Yeah. <laughs> and as they fell to the ground in fear, the angel said, Don't be afraid. Right, don't be afraid, because I bring good news to you. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he's the Messiah, the Lord. So go and see for yourselves, and you'll find him wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And then the sky was filled with angels, okay? And they were praising God. And when the angels had left, the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem, where they found the baby lying in the manger, just as they had been told. And when they had seen him, and they knelt before him, they rushed off to tell everyone about the special baby and the wonderful news. Okay? Now, we're going to sing... Mary had a little, or Mary had a little. Oh, wait a manger. Any other phrases or prayer requests, Mr. Dave? 
Well, kind of echoing what Ronnie said, uh, when you mentioned ministry, uh, I think those that were able to come, uh, we had some new faces last night. Uh, and it was always, it's always good to see new faces. Uh, but uh, Mike Schultz and Amy came, and he's in a uh, battery operated chair. Uh, but he's looking forward January the 6th to his surgery. To try to alleviate some of the other problems that he's had. So, just I know he's on the list, but just say it's prepared for, for uh, Mike and Amy and both to be able to do this. That makes me think of Audie. She's still recovering from the virus. She needs still a lot of prayers, and Steve Gray still needs a lot of prayers. Anybody well, we, else? We found out late in the week that Sandy Schmuddy uh, has been hit with the COVID virus, too. Okay, those. I'd like to ask that you to the church keep our ex son in law in their prayers, Brian Wheeler. Um, he's having some health issues, and I just ask that you keep him in your prayers. Okay, well, I have to refer to the floor. Rachel. I'd like to have you um, keep me in your prayers this weekend when I travel with my daughter and, and her um, daughter to Florida and back, that we have a safe trip there and a safe trip back home. No one else to have the windows traveling with me to keep me out of trouble with the travel. Kirk. Keep all of the survivors in Kentucky and all through that tornado alley in your prayers. They need a lot of help. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of help for a long time. It's going to be devastated whole cities. A lot of people are still missing, so we want to keep holding up to prayer too. Are there any other prayers? Um, Dave? <laughs>
else that has a phrase, prayer request or a phrase? Pastor, would you come up and listen for prayer, please? So we spent some time Wednesday night uh, on the story of the encounter between the angel and Mary this week. And I just want to remind, uh, just read these words. This is Mary's response after she asked some questions. But those questions were alleviated. That um, specifically the angel said that the Holy Spirit is about to come on you and he will overshadow you. And to that, Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have spoken. One author said, reminds us that um, we don't usually think in these terms, but I, he was wondering if uh, that was Mary's way of receiving Jesus in her life. All of us encounter that question in our tradition. Have, has Jesus, have you allowed Jesus to come in to your life, to impact it, to be your king, and to put you on a path? Church key. Established by him because he came to us in this world. So maybe we ponder that. And would our response be, I am the Lord's servant. May your word come true and may it be fulfilled in us. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you and are grateful for um, many things big and small in our lives. Specifically, as we hear the story of your birth this morning, we are grateful that you had chosen to send your Son, whom we call Emmanuel, our God with us, into this world. To grow from a baby into a full-grown man that would proclaim the word that you had given him, that would live out the very path that you had set before him. And then even as he cried on that night, take, take this cup from me, he also cried, yet may it not be my will, but your will be done. Lord, as Mary has spoken, so may we. May we affirm that we are your servant this morning. And may we do as Jesus and Mary did and affirm that your word might come true in our lives. That everything, these candles we light today, the candles of hope and peace and joy, that we may embody those things in our walk with you, in our walk before the world. Lord, we also ask that you would come into our lives <coughs> as you have this week and bless us. Anoint us with your spirit to be able to see the ways that your hand is working in our lives. For the ways that you've provided healing, for the way you've provided through a backpack ministry, <clears throat> through the ways that you have been present to us, have spoken your peace, your patience, your love, and your joy to us. Lord, we give thanks for those things in big and in small ways this morning. We lay before you those who need healing. Those who are struggling in their bodies, whether it be carrying around a simple illness, whether it be entering into this process of this COVID virus, whether it be that they've gone through or are anticipating surgery. Lord, we lift those names before you today in our lives that you may show your hand at work in those places. That you might ease the pain. That you might deliver someone from the effects of the virus. That you might anoint them with patience as they await their time of surgery. Lord, you promised that you came into our lives. And we don't often give you the things that are very simple, very mundane. We sometimes look in our hearts and say, oh, that's, that's not big enough for God. 
It's not big enough for you. But Lord, nothing's too big, nothing's too small for your hands to take it and to bless it. So in the smallness of our hearts, the smallness of our lives, as insignificant those moments might seem, I pray that you might take them into your hands. You might speak your word in the midst of those things, that our hearts, our minds, and our lives would be filled with the testimony of the good news that our King, our Emmanuel, has come. And because of that, the world has received life and has received it above. Lord, once again, we give thanks for this gift. And we pray that it might impact our lives, that we might live in the world around us, proclaiming your good news until we see you again. Lord, we pray these things in your precious and holy name. In all God's people say. Amen. Amen. If you're able, I'll invite you to stand and sing. Um, our tradition for the past year has been to place our offerings in the plates at the back, and so I invite you to do so. But let us stand and give thanks to the one who has given us
return the song to the king. Sister Shirley, you have something to answer? I wasn't trying to. Produce fruits in keeping with repentance 
And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that not one of these, out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. And the axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. And imagine the crowd bewildered as questions began to arise in their hearts. And so they asked, what, what should we do then? John answered them, the one with two tunics should share with him who has none. And the one who has food should do the same. And there were tax collectors in the crowd that day, and they asked, teacher, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required. Then some of the soldiers asked him, and Jesus, what should we do? And he replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely, but be content with your pay. <clears throat> and the people were found waiting expected and were all wondering in their hearts if John might be the Christ. But John answered them all, and he says, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I will not be worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. There were many other words that John exhorted the people with and preached the good news to them. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his words from the Gospel of Luke about the one that we know as John. The one who came to prepare the way for the Lord. To make straight the paths, to proclaim that the mountains will be made low and the valleys will be lifted up. That all of us will be placed on an equal plane, all because of the grace and mercy and forgiveness of the one we call Lord. The one that comes to us in this life as a baby, the one that we celebrate. Might be a little counterintuitive to hear the words of John today as he prepared the way in the crowd that day were religious types like you and I. People that were devout in their faith. People that went through the rituals of their lives to observe God. To observe the Lord. To do the right things. To be ritually pure. To be wholesome. To be ready and willing and prepared to be in the presence of God himself. As they waited, they were preparing their lives through the festivals, through the rituals that would make them clean and pure. So they did what was appropriate. They came to be baptized. They came to be washed. They came to take a bath. That God might find them clean as he entered their presence. And John addressed that very thing by looking at them and saying, Oh, you grew your life. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm challenged by that phrase. And I'm challenged simply because if I really examine my life, I'm among the religious types of our day. I do my best to come on Sunday, not just to preach, but to worship. I try to read my scriptures. I try to pray every day. I try to be kind. I try to do the right thing. But John addresses that very group, that very thing, and says as we prepare the way for the king, let me remind you in a very real way that those things do not make you any more sons and daughters of Abraham. That one is coming, that our king is coming into the world, the one I am preparing the way for, the one whose sandals I am unworthy to tie or to untie. 
The one whose sandals I'm unworthy, unworthy to take off of his feet and to serve him. He will come and he will establish a new kingdom in this world. He will come and he will define who are sons and daughters of God. Who are children of God. Those that are qualified to come into the fold. He will come and he will proclaim to them a new way has entered the world. Your sacrifices I want no more. They don't make you children of Abraham. Your, the very fact that you were once the chosen people of God does not make you children of Abraham. In fact, the stones lying on the ground, I can easily just fall to them and make those children more than your rituals and your sacrifices. Those things don't make qualify you for the kingdom. But the one who comes into our world will deliver to us the very basis of what it means to enter the kingdom and what it looks like. John reminds them that what God wants most is obedience. That when we hear the word of God, we don't just absorb it into our minds and our hearts, but we let it flow from our very lives. John wanted them not just to repent with their words, but to demonstrate that their lives had been turned away. That's what repentance means, to turn around our lives that the world might see, that those around us might see new things in us, new actions from us, that we are a different person. So Paul calls them to the true nature of repentance. And I realize that I belong to, sometimes to the brood of others. That I believe the wrong, I, I put too much faith in the wrong things. And it diverts me from this life of repentance, this life of obedience, this life of turning around. And I also realized this week, you know how love in love I am with the thought of obedience. Maybe you're in love with the thought of obedience. But you know the action of obedience? Why is it so difficult for us? Why is it so hard? Why is it so easy to say in my head to someone who I've offended, I'm sorry. But to go to them and to actually make good on that apology is so difficult. Why is it so hard for me to take out of my abundance and give to somebody who doesn't have something? Why is it that I expect strings attached? I expect them to be a certain person or do certain things in order to receive money. It's all because I fell in love with the thought of obedience. But what John wants them to understand is true repentance is not just to be in love with the thought of obedience, but to enact it in our very lives. Now they would have known in this day what John was talking about and what he was calling them to, so they, had, they all had the same question on their hearts. John, tell us what to do. And I wonder that day if John stood before them and said, well, if I tell you what to do, what you should do, are you going to go do it? If I tell you that when you have two tunics and your neighbor has none, give them the extra tunic. You see how this works? Your needs are supplied, and out of your abundance, they, their needs are supplied. Out of your abundance. God is asking us in obedience to live out of our abundance to bless others in our lives. To equalize those mountains and those valleys. To make straight the path. All because his son came into the world as an infant. Our king 
born as a, a baby to equalize the world. He would equalize it by living a life of service to others. Even the tax collectors were there that day and asked, what should we do? And I, I, John tells them, don't take any more money than is required. Yes, you are at the service of the empire. So do your duty in their eyes. But don't extort your brothers and sisters. Don't shake them down for more money so that you can live a comfortable life. But out of your abundance, out of your reserve, don't ask them because they need it. And even the soldiers who carry a lot of weight and a lot of power in their world, they could easily knock on someone's door and start shaking them down. They asked John today, what should we do? Which indicates to us historically that there were Christians or there were believers in the midst of the Roman world. Doing their service in their kingdom. What should we do? And John says to them, don't misuse your power. If you have authority over someone, if you have the ability to hold someone under you, choose to bless them instead. Choose to use that power for you. It's so easy for me to look at my abundance and be very reserved. Be very, I think in our day we would call it very responsible. <clears throat> but John wants us to see that the one that is coming into our world will have a different view. That if your needs are being met, look into the world and look for someone else's need and bless them. That's not only a message we need to hear at Christmas, that is a message we need to hear every day. And the third part, and the key moment here, is when John says, when they, in, in the hearts of the people, as John was speaking with such boldness and passion, he was speaking with fervor, he was impacting the lives of many. The second question on their heart is, is this the Christ? Is this the Messiah? Because he speaks like one. And John looks at them and says, I am not you. Because I do not baptize you in the Holy Spirit, and I do not baptize you in the fire. It's impossible to live a life of obedience according to the kingdom outside of the presence of the Spirit. The Spirit was on John, the Spirit is on the, in the lives of the prophets of old. And we should take note of that. That their power and their authority and their words came from the presence of the Spirit in their lives. And their willingness to accept that Spirit and to be vessels for it. As Mary did, when she heard the words of the angel, when she had the conversation, and then she said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled that we cannot live this life without the presence of the Spirit working in us. We'll just be the same old people. And John tells us very plainly today when he talks to that word of my verse. That's not what repentance means. Repentance means that you will enter into this process of making your words and your actions match each other. That in your power you will work to bless others as Jesus would bless the world. That you would look to make their way straight. That you would remove the stumbling blocks. That you would take them in their valleys and that you would allow Jesus to lift them up. And anybody who is up on a high peak would be brought low so that we all share in the things of the kingdom. 
It really is John's way of saying you and I are the light of the world, that we are the salt of the earth. And it's as if today John says, and may it be so because you have said, Lord, I am your servant. May it be fulfilled in me today. I urge you in this season to struggle with what it means to walk in a call to obedience. In the hope and the promise and the truth. The very thing that brings us joy today. Which is, it is only by the grace and mercy which comes through Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit that we receive life and receive it. And our celebration is it's because He came to us, not because we went to Him. May we not just celebrate the truth that He came to us, but may we say, Lord, speak to me. Your servant is listening. And may your words be fulfilled in me this day. And then let us commit to take the good news of the blessing that Jesus has worked in our lives through the power of the Spirit into the world around us. And to do as John did. And simply share the good news. Then as the song says, come and worship. Come and worship. Jesus Christ, our new Lord, the new Lord. Let us invite people this season to come and worship. By providing what they need out of our abundance. That they may be blessed by the hand of the Lord. Let's pray. Gracious and merciful Father, we come simply before you today and ask that you would help us to be obedient. Pour forth your spirit on us and find us willing to be like Mary and say, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled in us. And in our reservation, when it's troubling, when it's difficult, when it's hard to do the right thing, may we in all vulnerability and honesty enter into those places and say, Lord, with the help of your spirit, I will walk in these ways. That the world may see your life because I have chosen to become someone different because you have chosen to dwell in my presence. And because of that, I have to. Lord, find us faithful and find us willing and Find us obedient as we wait for you to come yet again into our world to take us home to be with you. Lord, anoint us today and send us today into the lives of those around us, inviting them to come and worship. Come and worship. Come and worship our new morning. In your precious and holy name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And as a closing hymn today, we'll just simply, we'll sing, Tis so sweet to trust in you. Number 581. Let us stand if we are able as we speak to the partners.
through God our Father, through the work of his Son, and in the power of the Spirit, to bless the world around us and call them to come and worship the newborn. Go in his grace.